to, if, if we talking current week, I'll say I, I know it's two things this week that got me hot. We got the Kyrie Jones. We mm-hmm. got the Takeoff Jones. So I throw it out to y'all. Which one of y'all want to hop into first? Man, I, 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 I you know, rest in peace, Takeoff, too. But I say sure. we, we, we start with uh, Kyrie and then we'll come back to the – I think the Takeoff thing is a couple things. But I feel like – okay. Kyrie is a little more important, kind of got me a little, mm. little hot too. So, so I, I, I started I off and posed this question to y'all boys: Are we watching a live action butt breaking in public? Oh, no, I mean it's not just one; it's a lot. They, 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 they got a lot of people doing it. Right? Nah, they that's, that's, it, this, it, this, it, this would allow. This is why I'm asking that question. Okay, and since, so based on like I was listening to, I can't remember the uh, the white dude. That's well. Either way, either way, it doesn't matter who he is. He was. I kind of agree with what he was saying. He was saying that the no matter of fact, it was Chris Bruchard. Chris Bruchard. I know you're talking about from ESPN. He was talking about yeah, yeah. He was he was talking about like and I, I and like I say, they going too fucking far. I agree with that 100. percent Way too far. Like you know what I mean? It, he didn't write the or he didn't create the fucking documentary. So you know what I mean? He just posted it. But at the same time, I think that where 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 he feels and I guess a lot of us feel too is that we're connecting. The uh, the idea of him saying like the blacks are the original Hebrews to the uh, to like he he doesn't want to apologize because that because of he didn't create the joke. But at the same time, if if we if he will is he if he's willing to say that there are anti-Semitic shit, that's anti-Semitic shit in there, shit that's not true. If he's willing to say that, then in my opinion, like I understand, like I ain't going to say I apologize for for you know what I mean? At first, I'm not going to apologize for being anti-Semitic because I didn't say anything anti-Semitic. So I get that stance. But also, the actual documentary itself, if we know that it has fallacies in the shit, I would completely condemn any fallacy because you don't connect me to any fallacy. All right, cool. So this is where, for me, I've had the the worst... Well, I I just really hated how the media has covered this at all. Mm. Um, and it goes down to this this concept that maybe it's, it's like a, a debater that I've heard named Destiny. He said this, and he was talking about maybe Kanye, right? Don't want to really connect those two, but he was making this statement where he said, like, if you actually want to prove somebody wrong, engage with what they're saying. Mm-hmm. Like, so like with Kanye, whether you feel whatever you feel about it, typically people aren't engaging specifically with what he's saying to prove him wrong, Right. So so if he makes uh so if he so if he makes yeah you know I mean just a statement about whoever instead of being like this is that just prove it wrong and then that that makes for a better conversation mm-hmm. instead of using like these broad terms so I say that to say with Kanye not Kanye Kyrie so let's now engage with what he said in the interview if you watch both of them mm-hmm. he denounced the false things inside the documentary. Said that he doesn't stand by that. Right, right. They, they like he, he from the Holocaust piece. He denounced those things. Mm-hmm. He, he gave the story of how, why he, he even that, went to, to it. Yeah, yeah. Like, and he, he said that it's a bunch of things. And he also said, I'm not promoting it. Yeah, yeah. I, I went down the line. This is, this is how I got there, and I, I posted it because of this. Of course, I do not agree with everything inside the documentary. These mm-hmm. specific things, I also don't agree with. Right. I take responsibility of it. So. To me, if we actually engage with it, what has he not denounced that they're asking him to? Yeah, no, I see it. I think I think that it's literally, and it's funny because like I think that they just they keep saying it's not a uh, what is it a un what are they saying a un I can't think of the word specifically. It's like a a complete apology. Oh no, they, the they want they him to bend it? over and kiss the ring. And to me, like that that's the part that's the buck breaking part. Mm. It, it, it's that like. We're going to put your heroes in front of you like this in complete submission. Mm. Like, even after he done went and said, like, the word, because it, it was like, he didn't say literally, I apologize and I'm sorry. Right. Like, he, he cleared up every single thing, every single point anybody had. He just didn't say, I apologize. Like, yeah. those specific words. No, I, I, I get And it. to me, like, that's the part where it's like, we're almost watching the lynching happen in, in, in real time and they're just tightening the rope. Because no matter what he does, it says, if I don't say this specific thing, mm-hmm. even if I denounce all the things that you come up to me with. And to me, like, that, that's the hard part for me specifically. Mm-hmm. I don't okay. know, Johnny, what you, what you got? Uh, I want to say welcome back to the 2B Fair Show. I'm your host, Johnny P. Over here, real. It's Q. 
And I guess my only, well, what I will say is, because I agree with you, with what you're saying as far as they not, and, and that's what get me, they they not engaging with Anything that like they ignore the, every the, apology that he actually the, made. The actual facts when he said I'm not anti, I'm an omnis, I'm, I'm for all religions, I promote unity. Yeah, he said all of that, and then they still going. But it go well to me. My thought that I came up with earlier the week is, you know, the same people that's on like the, the Charles Barkleys and Shacks. Oh, let's wait, let's wait for that because I want I want to hop there too. Mm. Um, let me let, let me, oh, finish. Let me get let, your clip off. Let bro, me finish. Bad. Let me finish. I, let I, me, I ain't gonna I ain't gonna let, let you. Let me finish. But the uh, same. Well, I, I won't say no names. But the same people who was mad at Kanye for saying slavery is a choice, mm. are the same people up there first in line to come and talk to you know or or, or, or denounce you know Kyrie for speaking you know for for speaking truth. And that just go, it goes into that same slave you know. No, it is. And the thing is, mentality of to me, I, I call it tap dancing, right? So we we gonna we gonna look at. Shaq and Charles Barkley specifically, just as this. And to me, what's crazy about this, and it shows like maybe this goes to my boy Tone's idea of like the black inferiority complex, mm. right? Where they start the conversation about, hey, what you said could have or hurt people, X, Y, and Z. Like you, you saying these things hurt people. And then as soon as they, they, they turn that conversation to talk about this black man, they start being idiot. hurtful. Like they, they saying words like this. Like these quote unquote harmful words to where like that in itself is such a crazy contradiction. You know what I mean? Like how, how do you talk about your words harming somebody and in the next sentence, now you're levying and leveraging these harmful words at this person mm. as if like this doesn't somehow apply to this whole, this, this guy as well. Yeah. And it's like, I mean, especially for like, like bro didn't go out and hurt nobody at all. He ain't, yeah. he ain't going to say nothing. Like, like even with the Kanye, Kanye went out and might've misspoke. Like, 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 there were some clear mistakes where you know, Kanye yeah, yeah. And, and what he said, and, and that, I, that's why I don't want to lump those two. Together. I yeah, think yeah. we could talk about those two well, separately. Well, that's why I'm separating yeah. it because Kanye had clear mistakes in his messaging. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Kyrie had no messaging. He had a, very clear a, a, a link, and then he right. explained the link in a pretty like intellectual, well-minded, clear-minded way. Way, you know, a couple times, you know, not just once, but then he went and doubled back on it and, and came back and said it again and it's like if a black man speaking the truth in america is is you know that, that's where it gets to me it's, it's i don't think they're mad because what he said is anti because he didn't say anything anti-semitic right. and, and, and i asked somebody this not to cut you off tell me what anti-semitic thing that Kyrie said he did oh yeah no he absolutely didn't and he's say denounced anything, anything that could be thought of as that thing so let me ask you this: Have you watched the uh, the the documentary, the the thing that, that everybody's talking about? Have you seen? I, it? I personally have not. Okay, I haven't seen it either. I've seen I, 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 I've seen they're... bits. I, I've seen about uh, first forty five minutes of it, uh, but it it it, it kind of is slow. Like it's a lot of reading. Oh yeah, now you you you're saying, and this is speaking from somebody that that's ignorantly talking because I haven't seen it per se. But everybody that I've heard describe it like it's kind of like an anthology of black people, and there is pieces in which like they might quote something that either Hitler or somebody or Hitler Hitler esque have said, right? That's engaging with, you know what I mean, them people. And to me, like there's a lot of pieces in it from what I understand that can and Johnny, you you watch some of it. Um that deal nothing with that. There's pieces that is kind of like a almost like a black history anthology. Mm -hmm. Speaking of the origins of black people in their lineage when it comes down to their Semitic origins. It's almost it's almost a religious text. Cause, I mean, there's a lot yeah. of like Bible stuff. I mean, it, it, it quotes stuff, you know. From well, let, the, let me ask this question: Do you know? Do, do y'all know what Semitic means? Well, so I, I I allow y'all engage in this if y'all want. Oh, I no, think that, that that's this, one of them this clips. Be... That, I think that that's one of them clips. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I that's think. one of them clips. You, I, I don't like... want to die, run down that yeah. far too much, only because no. of, I think our messaging can get mistaken. I, I'm not. I'm saying that to say this: if if they're going to call something anti-Semitic, then why is there nobody teaching what being Semitic is? How can you be anti-something if you don't know what the other, the opposite version of it is? Like, and why does it seem that the only time that it's called anti-Semitic is when a black person refers to it? Because we've been watching. This. If you ever watch South Park, South Park has been picking on Jews for years. They've actually said hurtful stuff. Mm -hmm. Nobody says anything about it. I mean, I think I think that stuff gets called anti-Semitic too. I think they've 
they've called that stuff out. And I think when it comes to black people, I think there's some more of a intentionality towards it as far, mm-hmm. especially because I think they, I think they're a little scared of black people stumbling. You know, we're getting closer to that truth. Uh, yeah. I'm, I'm not going to go too deep, but I say, they I, just think, I just say, just give some questions to think about for the people out there. What does Semitic mean? Why is it that people only get mad when black people say something that they consider anti-Semitic? Like, why is that? That's, that's really what people need to find out. And who is Shem? Look up those things. The man knows something. That's all I'm going to say. Got you. So, um, so, yeah, I, I guess I don't, don't want to, you know. We, we, I, don't want, I don't want to go there either. We, we, we got you. So, 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 <laughs> so kind of, uh, but, but, but staying a little more, more I guess, um, focused on like kind of like the, the Kyrie perspective of it and like just just the overall I would we'll just say like the overall perspective that you can take from it I heard something earlier that was also very interesting where it speaks about all right cool so if we're, if we're going to like really hold him to this thing explain the selective outrage because what you don't hear is ain't nobody coming for Jeff Bezos ain't nobody t- coming from for the actual carrier that has this book and documentary up. So if it is understood by whoever they is, that this is a very egregious document, documentary, mean documentary and document being the book. Why aren't y'all coming for, for them? And why is there no accountability being held for Bezos to actually having this on his platform? Yeah, no, I would assume that like, you if 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 he was to take if Bezos didn't house it on his platform then that would be almost like well I guess it's still it's not necessarily like freedom of freedom of it speech go to freedom, freedom of speech of creation and all that yeah it kind of I mean but but, but if you're attacking it, so like, something for being anti-Semitic I would imagine that you attack all all things that are profiting from this yeah, and promoting I, this I don't know I think that might be I mean it'd be far. way more beneficial if they really cared to go for Jeff Bezos because he's the one that's actually making money off of it. Yeah, the, Kyrie, I mean the biggest thing they talk yeah, about is getting, platforming. But at shit. the same time, is that it's not like it's not like Jeff Bezos is promoting the shit. Now, I'm not saying Kyrie was promoting it. He does house the actual information, but it's not like he's promoting it. Well, would it would it not be worse if you're profiting from it? No, I guess I guess yeah. I, 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 like Kyrie I said, ain't I make think a dime off that documentary. Reach. Jeff Bezos is getting paid, like probably yeah, still, like he probably made a lot. Like after it went out, you're not. He's literally platforming, that, promoting, and profiting. But I guarantee yeah, there's I, a lot of people that, that went to it and bought it off of Amazon since this thing came out. No, so I mean, sure. Jeff Bezos is the one who's like Kyrie's losing money on this. Jeff Bezos is actually probably making That's money true. on it. So we're That's like, right. and, and I'm just speaking about if there's going to be outrage, why wouldn't it be like just a very linear? Sense of uh, outrage think, across I, the board. I think that the fucked up thing is that I mean, like we, we why, literally man. just value too much of famous people's fucking opinion. I think that shit like they have too much power in their in their speaking and and the things that like they have too much power over our community and over communities at large. I think that shit is actually one of the worst things about the current time that we're in. Is that these and the thing is, is like I actually like hearing some of the uh, hearing some of the opinions. You know what I mean? But at the same time, I think that they have too much they they have too much uh uh grasp on what people at mass think. And that may be why, you know what I mean, they kinda going going at them this way. It's because him putting that book out, of course, then that, that actually is the type of promotion that whoever made the shit, we never heard of it before. So now he's actually awakened the ears and eyes of millions to this fucking book that is I don't I haven't seen the shit, so I ain't going like demonize I haven't seen it. But it has fallacies in it, and it's talking, uh, I guess, offensive. It has offensive language to that that community. So, I mean, the the big thing to me that I kind of look is like, why the fuck do we care so much about what these people got to say? Right. Like, um, like, I, I guess that shit is not that fucking important. I don't sure, give a fuck. Uh, sure. So, I I would also I guess lend a couple couple points to what you're saying. Uh, do you think that his tweet is what drew all the attention to it, or the promotion? Oh no, the media? it's probably them for sure. And nobody knew about. No, that's this. true. Like that's nobody cared. Well, I, nobody, nobody's really checking Kyrie's Twitter. You think like, so? Uh, no, who, nobody who, got who, mad. No, no, nobody no, got no, mad. Nobody, nobody saw the tweet and got mad at it. They, mm-hmm. they got mad once the news said something. Yeah, yes, right. it, like if if like it's, that's true too. Kyrie. Tweets a lot of just random, that's what he like which McCarvis, and I think even inside his interview, he was like, "What's interesting that this is the one that kind of p- picked mm-hmm. up and went because he 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 be on a lot of third eye type shit, woke yeah. shit all the time. Like that's not rare for him. 
in general. Um, in which I guess you you asked why is it important for. Uh, uh, well, one, I, I'll also say I don't think that this is the first generation that's had um, influenced by celebrity and no, famous people. With the internet, it's like super, so like the leaders I mean, of everything. I mean, but they did the same thing to Muhammad Ali, though. Yeah, I, I, I think that we... 60 years ago. This yeah. this tends this takes it into a different conversation, but I, I, I hate when we make things about this year. I mean, this time. I think right now is probably the most diversity of thought that we have... In accessibility for common people, ex- oh, no, including sure. celebrities, to I'd where agree. like in the past there was like three voices for black people, mm-hmm. in which now you can actually get a Kyrie or whoever else, and these actually be influencers that make a difference. Like you can get a Ben X, you can get you yeah. know what I mean the nineteen keys, Dr. which in the past Dr. these were people that were able to amass a decent enough following. Yeah, but also, and, but also they they don't they also don't have the the immediate eyes as like a motherfucker that's playing basketball. You see what I'm saying? They they have to build their shit like based on just strength off the strength of what they're saying and just the following B. But how many becoming, sports sports guys do people care about what they say? Shit. If, if anybody what's uh Matt Barnes and fucking uh your boys pod, Steven Jackson. Don't they don't talk about them. They just talk about what they say. basketball. They talk about a whole bunch more than that. Do you Please, watch that? I watch them I I watch up me all the smoke all the time. All the smoke, that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah, I, I watched them. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they, they don't even, like, they bring guests on. And then they, they, they go through that, like, pretty much their origin story. And then they, they, they chop it up back and forth. And it's Bro, it's rare that they me, get, let, go ahead. Oh, let's just say that let's, maybe that was a bad example. We can use the pivot. We can use I Am Athlete, which I Am Athlete's more now on just simply talking about. Well, I haven't watched them that much, but it seems like it's super sports oriented now. Uh, but the pivot, it's plenty of platforms out there where these are, uh, artists and athletes are literally diving more into their, you know what I mean, their beliefs, their, what they believe in with the shit that they've gone I will say this, though. Uh, the I Am Athlete, the Pivot, those are the former athletes that are in the second part of their career. They're not, right. they, they didn't necessarily have do that when it was tap platform, yeah, when they it, were athletes. So that's the a little different. Time, well, it is a little different. Yeah. But I mean, at the same time, do you think that niggas would be actually paying attention to them if they hadn't been athletes? Well, that's where they got their fame. So, I mean, I, I that's, guess that, that's one of the, the chicken thing, before the, the egg thing. The only thing I'm saying is that that the the, the idea that these people have such uh, um, they have such influence because they entertain us, because they've entertained us, they have such influence, and that is like a super powerful fucking. You know what I mean? I mean that is very powerful in, in today's time. That shit is super powerful. No, I agree with that. I, I definitely agree with that. I, yeah, but I, 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 at I'll the end quiet. of the day, it's it's tough to know to like. As an athlete, like I can't really have social media for real, for real. I have to be so select. You know what I mean? I mean, social media is so normal for for everybody that it's like nah. But as an athlete, you definitely have to be at this point. It seems like you have to be much more because, it, like, okay, I could give you another example. I think was it Charles Barkley who was like, like I don't want to be a role model. I want to play basketball. And like, right, right. Jordan, like they kind of had the same. That's kind of similar. Like it ain't about. All this other shit. I'm here to play basketball, and that's it. But like, go ahead. Well, I, I got you. Um, I guess to an ex- one one thing is that like you're you're siloing athletes in general. Like anybody that has fame has mm-hmm. influence and notoriety, and their opinion sure. matters. So it's not really like specifically about like an athlete. Oh no, like no, it's, it's so ahead. whether you're you're TikTok famous as soon as you become mm-hmm. TikTok. Now, what you post makes a big difference. That's right. So, like no, that, that's that's, that's kind of like one of those across the board things. So, mm-hmm. just to silo it to just specifically athletes. No, that's what it I was becomes, trying to do to begin with, though. But I get what you, what you were saying. Like these athletes, why do we? Whatever no, you're saying, like they, they have attention general, on they them. Too much. Uh, too much. I was saying that they, their opinions matter too much to society. I'm They're talking about famous glorified. people in general. Like motherfuckers literally base their whole opinion off of some what the fucking most famous person in this realm of thought thinks. You know what I mean? So like I, that's what I was talking about. In not just basketball. Not just basketball. What I was I wouldn't just like. I mean, that's, that, that, that's an intentional thing though. I mean, as far as by the media, you know, they 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 mm-hmm. they like those platforms are given to people like you know because they can take them away just as easy. So I mean, it's who are allowed you know to to get those platforms. I, I believe, or, or who they don't, you know, who they don't cancel, because they can cancel you at any point, or you, you know, you they, you they can take it away from you if they wanted to. Yeah, sure. But I, I'm gonna just, I, I'm, I'm gonna piggyback on something Kyrie said as far as just, just keep that same energy as far mm. as like, 
If, and that, that's, that's the big fact. If, 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 if we have to be careful about what we say about certain people's history, people got to be careful about our history. You can't come and pervert the facts or come and try to say something didn't happen in our history mm-hmm. and, and it did. And you get okay because they try to do that in schools or, or, or whatever. They trying to oh, they damn, they that's the fact, they trying to they, they they trying to pervert our history. And it's okay if when mm-hmm. it comes to our history, we talk about somebody else's history. It's a big mm-hmm. fucking deal and all that. So I'm gonna just tell you know no, I, that's I, tough. That's I just tough. you know I, we, we got to keep that same energy across the board all that's the way. Right. So I will say that goes to black people's accountability factor too. We have to we have to hold people accountable. Mm-hmm. We not holding them accountable because what I keep seeing is like even with the stuff like Kyrie talking about, I've seen a lot of black people who going against him. Oh, he was stupid for doing that. He should have yeah. been trying to get the bag. Black people be up for sale. A niggas lot. is for sale, bro. That is mm-hmm. like I swear to God, that's like the worst thing to me. Like niggas is for sale, bro. That's that. That's that. Slavery is a choice. That shit. Motherfuckers, is crazy. motherfuckers get on TNT and ESPN and choose slavery every day. Bro, that's that's motherfuckers crazy. getting up there and choosing it. So I mean, we, we can either stand for it or or, or and. The condemn people and it, the status quo will keep on going, or we can come together and like it ain't got to be that way. But hey, you you know something? I just thought of funny shit. Like, uh, doesn't that when we say niggas is for sale? What, what would you think is a profession where you uh <laughs> where you uh trick motherfuckers into uh selling themselves uh, off the cliff go. for your own profit? Here we go. Are you probably talking about um? Used car salesman? Well, I would think that, uh, you know, that, that probably. hey, you know. Used, um, used car, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. So I would think or that, car salesman, know, my bad. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I, I, <laughs> it, sounded, it just sounded like a familiar conversation that I remember having that one. Gotcha. Time. My bad, I, my bad, I'm fucking up. Hey, like I, yeah. like I say, people, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I guess you, you did hit on, on one of those things within the Kyrie conversation just then where... Maybe I think that this is a quote that might really, really kind of sit well with it when they say, "All kin folk ain't no, all skin folk ain't kin folk." Mm-hmm. And as you said, you can look on ESPN. I'm gonna just start saying Shannon, Shannon Sharp, tap dancing, Charles mm-hmm. Barkley, tap dancing, Shaq, tap dancing. Like it, it's a, mm-hmm. it's a lot of guys that's on there. And again, to me, if you make points that touch on and you engage with what he said have no problem with it nobody has done that though but no yeah, like no. I, i've only Literally. seen one show that gave really fair perspective on it and that was with Keyshawn, j will and max kellerman mm. and even max kellerman he 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 he's one of them people oh and, okay that's what and I he, he actually had a yeah, really man. fair perspective well, on and what did he say I, I, um i i i don't, don't want to like directly up. quote him but in Shit essence like because what what not Shannon Sharp, uh, Keyshawn Johnson said was like, hey, well, it sounded like he apologized about three times mm-hmm. or whatnot. And I think Jay Will kind of like, Jay Will's like, yeah, I watched the whole documentary. And to me, what it looked like, he's just trying to find, you know what I mean? Like do some some soul searching of him mm-hmm. and his people, X, Y, and Z. And this happened to have some of these unfortunate things in it. Right. And the Max Kellerman dude, I can't remember exactly what it was, okay. no. but in essence, he was like, nah, I, I get and understand that. I think that the only thing I would say is that when you're posting something that's quote that also is quoting somebody or has like similar rhetoric to a Hitler, it's going to devalue what you're saying. Mm. But I think that he he said enough at this point that it's kind of time to move on, and that was right. his point. And I thought that that was like a really really fair way to look at. It. Like they actually engaged with with what he said, and then like. Okay, all right. What's what's the next move, next steps moving forward? But to me, every single commentary that I hear about him speaks on things he didn't say at all. Mm-hmm. Like he never said anything anti-Semitic at all. Yeah, I want to act, like, 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 act like he said some. Yeah. Like, so like, then, like if you're talking about like stuff, him like promoting yeah, it or yeah, posting yeah. it, he talked about that and took responsibility. So then, like. Where are y'all basing the argument at? And that's that's where I keep getting kind yeah, of stuff. and that's why I kind of understand why he's not saying the words I apologize because I'm apologizing for shit that apologize. I didn't fucking say. And, like and, I'm and, not going to apologize for shit because I didn't say the shit. And here's another one too that's that's kind of that's kind of vicious too. Uh, if black people didn't have our history stolen over here, we wouldn't have to go and try to find the history. In, 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 in these books that they call anti-Semitic. So, I mean, he, if he's just trying to go back and find where his people come from, mm-hmm. uh, you can't, like, fault a man if through that journey, 
you go through some stuff that may be anti-Semitic, maybe whatever you want to say, because like the man is just trying to find his back to 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 our true history, and so mm-hmm. and to be honest with you, that shit it goes through a lot of those. A, a, a lot of those themes and stuff is directly tied into like where we ended up today. So I mean, I don't want to dive too deep into yeah. it, but I mean, um, us trying to get back to the home, our motherland. You know, there's gonna be some, you know, there's gonna be some little tricky areas that we're gonna have yeah. to navigate to to get back to, and that's not from any fault of our own. Like we didn't, we didn't buy a ticket on them ships to come over here. We got put on them bad boys. Yeah, um, I guess one of the one of the last points, and this is where I'll circle it back down I don't to actually believe that the so um the modern day. Uh, hanging the buck breaking because he ended up kind of caving in and he, he wrote the little text saying I apologize I'm sorry and somehow still even saying that at this point wasn't enough. is not enough now it's like alright he, he done folded I don't even want to say fold because I, I'm I, again I, I'll say I'm proud of him because I actually yeah. was able to see a black man standing on his own too yeah. and articulate he, he himself down. in front of cameras and pressure Mm-hmm. And s- describe again. I, I don't believe he said anything anti-Semitic, and I, I don't, con- not condemn. I don't promote anything anti-Semitic, and I can stand in the fact of like to me, he articulated himself in the sense that nothing I said, and I denounced anything that you believe could have been that that was within that. Um, but he did. Did he? Did he kind of cave into the pressure? Sure. Right. He he wrote the long thing and he, he, he said he apologized and I'm sorry to these communities X, Y, and Z. But now you see the five point bullet plan is like he he can't he can't be associated with our organization until he goes and does this mm-hmm. and then does this and then does this other thing. And then I need a verbal apology. Like it's almost like I need to bend down and sit kiss down with, my the, feet. with the rabbis and I'm like, yeah. Yeah, 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 I, I need a sensitive training. I need you to come speak to me and and I can feel that you're actually really sorry about all Bro, what the fuck are we talking about right now? Yeah. Like, I, out of somebody that literally out of his mouth, you can't quote nothing, nothing that he nothing. said, and he denounced anything that was inside that thing that could be taken that way. No, the facts, bro. I don't see how they don't look like they just tightening the noose and making yeah. sure all the rest of us is like, you step out of line. That's the point. You that, step out of line. That's what it is. It this will happen. It ain't necessarily that they even mad at it. I think but that's buck breaking. That's I, I, what they say the whole shit is. Yeah, I, th- I think they trying to make it. Get your example. toughest. Get your athletes. Get get your famous. Get your the people of notoriety. And we gonna make sure you understand. You don't do this. Mm-hmm. And you step you step a little bit out of line. And and, and that's why I don't think nobody black should get on TV and you know if you don't agree with it, just say I, I you should no comment or move mm-hmm. on. But I don't think you should go out your way. To denounce that man, I know it'd be a tricky situation sometimes. To you know, it's when they ask you these questions, they're gonna try to throw it on you. But you ain't gotta say nothing negative about that man, right? Like, like you can just keep K- it. Katie did a good job. You, you can just keep it cordial. You can and just Chris say. Bouchard actually did a good job too. See, I haven't heard him yet. Yeah, so. he, he that was yeah. Chris Bouchard did a good job too. In the okay. jump that I seen, he did a good job too. Kenny Smith, I think Kenny Smith was another one. The the one clip because even even inside like because he he was paired between. Charles Barkley and uh, Shaq. Shaq. Yeah. And you know what I mean? Like, he 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 just gave a fair enough. Mm-hmm. But he didn't go in, he didn't engage and do anything. But yeah, again, to me, I just think that as we wrap it up, I was very, very disappointed. Um, just in from all the, just the general public sphere of black men and how they treated this whole scenario. Um, even down to like some podcasters I watched, like Joe Buttons. I listened to him earlier today, and I like it was really nasty. He in my was opinion. talking about Kyrie. Well, he brought it up only to to like really super tiptoe, and and I think the guy name is Ice. No, Ice Ish. Yeah. He 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 was giving like like a real adult fair thing, and Joe was making sure he kept cutting them off. It was like ah, you, I don't know if we want to use this platform to say these. And like, and I'm like, he's not even like diving into like anything anti whatever. He's just like benefiting the doubt of Kyrie. Mm. And it's like, damn, like we really at this space where y'all are almost doing the things that these conspiracy theories are built off of and playing into those tropes. Yeah. Well, I mean, it go back to, I mean, e- e- even back on, you know, plantation politics, they used to have a whole section of slaves that was 
in the house doing master's dirty work. Yeah. You know, they, they they go and snitch on motherfuckers who's trying to run away. If motherfuckers thinking about doing a revolt, they go and tell them. So, uh, I think we should maybe, you know, put a put a pin in it. But before, you know, I I don't want to say tap shoes for sale, man. We we, we, we gonna shoes. start selling tap shoes on the, on the, on the How that emoji look? The, look? the little one like this. <laughs> this, this one. I, I had to check with my boy Johnny to make sure I was using the right one. You, yesterday. you had the right one. I, I had to check. I had to check. You, you, you had the right one. But tap uh, shoes for sale. I think that'd be a good place to put a pin in. It. All right, so I guess uh, next up we'll say uh, rest in peace to take off. That was a, a sad moment for the culture, really. This uh, this past week, it definitely, uh, you know, you definitely could feel the the energy shift when you know you saw that text or the notification come over. So yeah, I don't know, you know, what y'all's thoughts are on that one. I know I got you know certain opinions. On yeah, certain I, I do shit, too. But, but I'm oh, you, you yeah. want me to yeah? Let, let, oh, okay. Let's throw the so, old head first. Yeah, nah. Um, so I guess which, which which like I say I, I I thought that the last thing I heard was that it was his homie and it was an accident type of shit. Mm -hmm. Sound like it's some more information that came out since then. Mm -hmm. Um, at the at, I guess like I don't have a, the, my opinion is more on the the uh, the effect of our popular music on our community versus the situation specifically. So I think that we're gonna come back to yours. Yeah, yeah go ahead. Um, I I, ha I haven't. I, yeah, I have an observation and a strong opinion. So we we uh we really dehumanize life at an excessive level, in which, for me, when I woke up, I seen it, and this is less than twelve hours of him passing. We got people that's already blaming somebody, like you blaming mm -hmm. blaming his uncle that was with him. And if you look, they got pictures since three years old yeah, together. Yeah, yeah. Like my dog ain't even went through the first stage of grief, and been able to really process it. And people are going off of some random ass text message that's like, oh, this is what happened, and he's the fault, and this is the, like his he mama shouldn't probably have, he shouldn't have did this, right? Right, his aunt and mama probably just found this shit out on the internet, and y'all yeah. niggas like they ain't, they ain't even able to like really process death yet. And to me, the disgusting piece be like, we just seen this shit happen with the P uh, PNB rock dude. Well, like people was blaming his girlfriend. It comes out later, she ain't had shit to do with it. The post ain't had shit to do with it. And y'all went on like two, three days, four days of like a rant of like, now think of it like this woman just watched her partner die in front of her. I think she had to delete her Instagram. Yeah, like, like she watched her partner die in front of her to no cost to her. Not not no cost, like no no blame to her. And she just, like, if, if you get online, even if you're trying to escape for a second, everybody like, it's your fault, it's your fault, your fault. Yeah. And it comes out, it's not even her fault, right? Yeah. And the idea of people doing that so freely is crazy to me. Like, like this is heavy dehumanization of life that people look at celebrities as if they don't have a mama, don't have family. Like, these ain't real people. And yeah, to me, yeah. like, that's the disgusting part. Like, yeah. sure, a week, two weeks, we're going to probably end up discussing and we could, like, talk about and unpack all these different things. But when I sit in here within yeah, 11 same, hours, Kevin Samuels, 10 hours, way. right, yeah, 10 <laughs> hours of, like, bro. these crazy conspiracies, like, it's like, bro, y'all ain't even let the dust settle yet. Like, y'all nah, don't even know what's fact fiction, and y'all going off like these these first. random these random like like little things in which, like, let the shit happen. Like, bro, like it's real people grieving at this moment. Mm -hmm. Your opinion is not that important. Well, it, like, it, 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 it ain't being important. first, my bad. Let me get this last one off. Like, and, and and this be the corniest shit too, dog. And like, like you can see, I'm kind of getting worked up because I'm heated about it. Like. I don't fuck with people that be doing this shit either. Like, oh, now this is your, this is everybody's favorite rapper. Oh, now everybody loves the, bro. Like, you trying to go viral on some bullshit is weak. That's some corny cornball ass behavior. Like, if you're like you're trying to use somebody deaf as a launching pad of getting some likes, mm -hmm. just to have like a, a a really cool little thing inside that like the waking moments of this person dying. You seen the same same shit with. Nipsey with Cope. Everybody want to have a funny, witty thing. Mm -hmm. Sometimes your, 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 your opinion and your funny shit ain't needed right now. And, yeah, that, that's just my opinion, dog. Nah, that I, shit had me worked up. No, nah, no, nah, no, nah, nah, like, definitely that shit. But, but I've seen it happen so many times that, like, because cause I, I was pissed off with the PNB rock. I was pissed yeah. off with the... It, it's happened so many times in our culture that I think it's, it just speaks to... And, like, I've I been on some positive shit when it comes to black people. I see a lot of you know, positivity as far as 
where we're going, but when you see shit like this and what happened this week, it shows how far we still have to go because there's a lot of inferiority in just our mindset. And I think it goes even bigger than music because this is shit that happens outside of the music. I don't think the Migos had like very like violent, you know, music mm-hmm. or yeah, something nah, they, per, they, they really per se. But I mean, you even see it, you know, happen with, when, when Takeoff died as far as like, it's just a cultural thing. Like we got to just be better as black people as far as like, When's, when when is enough gonna be enough? When we gonna like like at some point like just doing the same thing over is like the definition of insanity. We can't just like continuously make these same mistakes and go down these same and then and then talk about we're talking about progression or talk about moving on if we can't even learn. Clarify a little bit more of where, where, where you're going. I'm, I'm I'm trying to make sure I follow you. So right now you're, you're talking about um, the actual action of him getting killed, correct? No, I'm talking about the reaction too. Reaction. All right, cool. The, cool, the, the cool, reaction cool, cool. to okay. it. Yeah, I'm talking about people online. All right, like, like basically what you were saying about the the, the reaction. I mean, mm-hmm. the death. I mean, oh, right, finish your point. We'll get to that. Part yeah, then. yeah, that, that, that's something totally different. But I'm just saying the reaction and, and the lack of uh, it, it, it's like a kind of inverted accountability versus empathy thing. Where mm-hmm. like empathy is when you, where you should be leaning on yeah. as a culture, but then in this instant, when it when it comes to our it's like grief, blind accountability. Well, for oh no yeah, when it comes to our grief, our trauma and stuff, instead of like us having e- e- empathy with each other. And being like, I understand what that man's family goes through. Let me not say this. Mm-hmm. It's like you want to sit and try to like fake hold somebody accountable. And it's like that, that ain't even true. And internet shit ain't even true accountability. It's just you running your mouth. Just niggas like, trying to get likes, bro. Yeah, but but it, and it goes to well to me. It's that like the pros and cons of the internet age. Right. You know, like 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 motherfuckers tap dancing for likes or yeah. doing mm-hmm. whatever. It's like we got we got to understand like 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 black life is black gold like we can't just mm. like let that shit just end and it be trivialized like i mean that motherfucker mm-hmm. he like take off was like he was uh, to, very influential to the to the culture i mean i think he was the best migo bro bro had bars he was my favorite yeah uh, i thought he was the best rapper so like i mean even personally to me it's a loss cuz like I, I like listening to take off rap so and it's just like we we got to be better as people before we like get on the internet or just yeah and do, and do the, all that the stuff. nasty part is like it's blind accountability yeah it's not like not you, even you no like proof. within 10 hours what we really know yeah nah, ain't no just, video out, ain't, ain't no nothing for real what we really know it, in my opinion bro that that whole idea of being first it's like it's like almost wanting to be like i know more than someone else like the idea like oh yeah i got them I posted my shit before. It's, it's it, a drug. You know what I mean? And it, bro, it if niggas yeah. do not shut the fuck up, bro. Mm-hmm. Niggas just need to shut the fuck up. Those are words. Nobody, bro, at the end of the day, like, you're okay, not you any better matter, because you have more likes today than yesterday. You're mm-hmm. still fucked up. Mm. Yeah, it like, doesn't like, it doesn't change yeah, anything, like, bro. Like, mm. like your rent is still due on the fifth. Exactly. Like, mm. <laughs> even if you did build up a lot of likes, the fuck does that mean? Right. The fuck does that mean? So I think Taj. I was gonna say this kind of reminds me when Kobe Bryant died, how the video and photos were just circulating mm-hmm. of his death, and it's the same thing with Takeoff. I didn't watch anything because I don't like watching those moments like on camera. Right. I just kind of feel like that's one of those things that shouldn't really be circulated around. Mm-hmm. Um, but there are some people who do indulge in those things. Right. Um, but I just feel like when people do that, it's like that family already has to grieve, and then on top of that, like if you do get online, it's all these videos of your loved one. Mm-hmm. Dying That's and it's like it's like it's re traumatizing you and it's like I don't think people realize because people want to be the first to report on something right and mm-hmm. give their two cents. I don't think that when people realize that the impact that it has on the people who are actually related to that person, their close loved mm-hmm. ones, their friends, and all of that, I don't think people really realize what that does to them to find out that your loved one possibly I don't know how they found out, but to possibly find out that your loved one was killed via social Online, media, yeah. it's yeah. like yo like. That's, I feel like at a point in time, people just kind of got to stop sharing stuff like that and let people just go sure. through the process. That's what that, that's what Vanessa Bryan even mm-hmm. said. Uh, she was like, I, I wake up every day, like, terrified that, like, me and my kids, like, those pictures are going to pop up. Mm-hmm. And it's like, that's fucked up. It's like, they already done went through, you know, the death, the trauma and stuff. And then you got to live with, like, a secondary, like, whole nother, like, nervousness of, like, oh, Somebody man. just bringing it up. Somebody, but, like, because sometimes, like, after you went through a process of processing some shit, mm-hmm. and you've gotten to like a settled point, like I don't need, like like somebody coming and being like my condolences three, four, five months after, like all you're doing now is like rebringing up something that I've I've worked to get over. Right, right. It was, even even it picture. might even come from like a good space, mm-hmm. but 
That's crazy I can see how that. like that can actually work. But I'm saying that that's different than a picture though. Like I mean, like you can oh, no, do, I, I, like, I, like, like, like seeing a picture, like 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 I mean, there's a lot of like rappers we didn't seen like they'll put the picture online. Mm-hmm. They'll put Black mm-hmm. Death on the and, internet. And I think that and it's the like that, and it's like you do all that work to get over it and then like a year later that pop up. It's like how much, you know, like it's just detrimental to people like the grief process. The, you wanna the, know what's more cornball behavior? The niggas that be in the comment section like uh, I, I so if we go to takeoff thing, right? Because I I seen it just scrolling down, and it was like, damn, the way that that uh Quavo was yelling his name was heart wrenching in the comment section. You see somebody where the video, yeah, cornball shit. And the thing bro. is too, I That's think cornball shit. Not only opinion. does it not only does it affect the 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 family of the people that you know what I mean close to the the individual, but I don't think we even really take into account how it affects us. Us, right? See, you sitting here and you're continuously watching this. Just like all of the bullshit He's people watch every bro. day. Like you sitting here watching this bullshit ass, destructive okay. ass, uh, uh, epi- uh, a full fucking season of some bullshit, a whole bunch of bullshit. And you not taking into account the, the fact that this shit is getting into you. It's, it's, mm. it's, it is getting inside of your, your opinions will then start to man- move a certain way just based on the, the consumption of this shit over and over. Hey, bro, I got, I got a question. Mm. Uh. I just 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 popped up in my head. We talking about this black death because I think it's intentional. I think they do it. How, how many white celebrities have died, and we've seen pictures, mm. you know, of them out there. Okay, when, when, when white celebrities or, or like, like people die, you know, like how come it's just us? How come when like a rapper that I like die, I gotta go on the internet and see it? But it's like all uh, every people of all races die. It'll be every interesting. Day. You know what? What's the current thing that's going to be interesting to see how it plays out is the Aaron Carter show. Yeah, Aaron Carter just passed, and it's gonna be really interesting to see. I, I, I ain't want to say that. Like, like yeah. it's it's, 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 a, it's a direct juxtaposition in which we can look at and see how it looks, mm. and see them pictures they put up of him, and see how it's talked about. You know what I mean? I I actually have no idea how he passed. I'm not even gonna make any like whatever. I, whatever. I seen he passed, and then I, I just went to the next because of. He was found. He was found unresponsive. I don't even know if it was a drug overdose. They just cool. found him. Um, I'm gonna be really interested in yeah. seeing the reporting the literature and headlines in how they treat this oh yeah i mean, you, I mean it's gonna be it's gonna be really really interesting i mean you know how they're gonna treat it i mean they don't put they, they, they don't put white death on tv like that mm. the crazy thing is too though is that like this person died at home in the bathtub versus in our scenarios we usually get killed out in public where everybody can see okay you know what I mean? So that is another difference too. You well, know, nah. how that because, scenario but, but, would but, but out. then then let's go Michael Jackson. Let's go Prince. Let's, let, 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 uh-huh. we, we do have a lot of our Whitney big Houston. celebrities. Whitney, Whitney, they, 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 they was trying to call the my boy daughter, Mike Jackson right? and Bobby, Prince dope heads. Bobby Christina. Mm-hmm. That, like like they they was trying to call both of them dope heads. You know what I'm saying? Like oh yeah, I mean I mean it's just I mean I think we, us as black people we play a part into. I own demise for something. Well, well, into well, it's all on demise, but it's the script that's been given by them people. You know, I, I don't even know, you know, who I'm referring to, but mm-hmm. you, you know, the, the the other side that has given a specific script as to how certain shit is supposed to, you know, play out and how, you know, you look, 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 like what they call it the uh the the, the, the lynch rules how, how, how they would condition slaves back in the day. It's a condition that black people are in mm-hmm. to when. This okay. stuff happens. We immediately go online and trivialize it and put it up, you know. And it's t- literally to our detriment. It comes. It even trickles down into. You see, dudes, regular dudes in Charlotte talking about, "Oh, we smoking the arms and, and and doing and doing all of that stuff." To where like that that mindset it comes from the top and then it trickles I, all the way down I can't, into the. I I can't give that. Uh, I can't give that like to the 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 powers that be. You know what I mean? Because it, it literally, we are, we, there are. I'm saying we're doing right, now let's the pivot, population. We're, we're about to pivot into his, that his original take. Literally, there's a portion of the population that literally find this, uh, uh, get this boost in, I guess, self esteem or some shit, some false self esteem by doing that shit themselves. They ain't, that ain't necessarily. By doing that shit themselves. The band, when I say doing that shit themselves, I mean by, like, being the first one to come up with this story to say this and this happened. I'm, I'm, like, talking, I'm talking about the psychology in that. Why do you get the play? Like, like why? Like, I mean, it, it's an inferiority play. Like, yeah. Posting a black dead body online to be the first. Like, that's the, the idea it's, of it's, being important, though. Everybody wants to be important. 
Mm. And I think that that's literally the reason why you want to be the first one. You want to be the one that holds the camera. So you got them. First thing you think about some shit going down. Oh, I'm going to go viral. That's that's the whole shit you want to be important. I don't think that comes from like, yeah. you know what I mean? That, no. And, and, and to answer that even more, you said the psychology is the endorphin hit. Right. Yeah. Like the endorphin hit when it comes to like, I get a bunch of likes, I get a bunch of attention, clout, quote unquote. Yeah. It's, it's like that that small little thing. Like they, they, they speak of... The social media apps and from the scroll, the refresh to the like, it's all meant to release small endorphins in which keeps you hooked. And that's why if you look in the past 15 years, niggas have went to like being this to like this everywhere they go. Mm-hmm. It's, a, it's like it's a clear change, but there's actually uh, what, what they call a UX is UX uh, behind it. User I, experience and design. I get that. I get that because cause there's science that go into that. But, but what I'm yeah. saying is like. I can say something about not wanting to take the vaccine. It's going to be something that pop up on my IG story that comes saying, so if I post a black deaf body, why come there's nothing that, you know what I mean? That's graphic. That shouldn't be, that shouldn't Probably. be censored. I mean, we, if you're a company that censors and that's. So do they, do they not? I, I'm going to be honest. I literally, any t- I, I do not click clips of death anything so i can't even say if it doesn't have like i I know i've scrolled before and it'd be like this video is graphic and whatever whatever and Mm -hmm. it'll say some shit like that so it doesn't do that for for these these what i'm saying i've seen like the takeoff death posted without that which is what Mm -hmm. i'm saying you know like without it i'm saying it should like if you're gonna put that up on you know somebody about for for a vaccine stuff which you know you should be able to put that up there for Black death, and you should be able to like you have the ability to censor what you want. Yeah, you, this, it's the selective censoring is what I'm talking about, and mm. and how that's the type of programming because they don't they're not gonna censor that yeah. type of stuff. That, that's my only point. Um, I guess it's a be a good time to kind of circle back to your original comment and statement about uh, well, well it's more just a, a question. Do okay, you, do you think that our current pop hip hop today is to the detriment of our community? Yes. Um. All right. So I guess. So to the detriment, I, I guess you could probably say that. That is, is, that's spoken broadly enough to where, yes, I think that there's common tropes that it'd be ignorant to say that it can't be seen as detrimental. But also, I see it uh, as more. Go ahead. No, no, no. But see, this is and this is something that I've uh, I've kind of uh, when when I want to talk about a certain thing, and I've noticed it like like even in like when I let's say like when they talk about. The idea of like, oh, when Trump was in office, like the Republicans, if you talk, if you said anything about Democrats and then that the person that was Democratic, quote unquote, mm-hmm. well, what about the Republicans? You know what okay. I mean? Like, well, that's not what the fuck I want to talk about right now. I made this statement. Let's talk about this. And then if you have something to say after that, then we can talk about that afterwards if you want to have the actual conversation. So, like, well, that was the only question. I get with you, you the comparison of yesterday. Well, I, yesterday well my, 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 pro- my problem is that it's too broad. So, like you just said, is current day music detrimental to the black community? Hip-hop. I think that it'd be ignorant to say to say no, it's and not because of in general. I think that and if, also we, if we compare pop too, just so we know, oh pop, yeah, what well, pop makes that, makes sure, that a little sure. different. But yeah, I, I think that it's very broad. Mm. Um, typically, I think the more interesting conversation would be: is today's music worse and more influential to like current day kids or? actions and the things that's happening because i think that from 1980 up until now you can make a case for music being detrimental to popular society Mm. from the drug usage to especially once as soon as we hit 90s you can kind of just see it gangster rap x y and z but you also like like so i think think the internet has made it more graphic though and then they also had they also had shit that was like you had a explicit version that was that didn't see the fucking radio and you ain't even know what the real song said. Like you literally no, had thing, to it's, it's figure. It's the same thing right now. N- no, it's nowhere close. It is. I, I listen to the radio. You, they yeah. don't say curse words on the radio. Bro, they say curse words on the radio, bro. bro. They Again, say curse I, words I, on the radio. Certain, radio, so, so, I, I think please, certain songs maybe are maybe less than others. They let certain stuff slip through, but they are supposed to. Say right. All right. So, but because this is the conversation I did want to get into, mm-hmm. but I wanted to make because. Your original statement was very broad, so you have no choice but to agree with it. But now, if we're talking about okay. right now being worse and the influence being worse, I completely disagree. And this is oh, yeah, like, no. I, I, why? Go ahead. Oh no, go ahead. Why? 
statistics just back this up. And what so statistics specifically? I'm, 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 about to, I, I, okay. I'm, I'm gonna go, go into it. Um, in which this was right a clip, huh? This was the clip. You oh had. Yeah, well, I guess this this is like a, a small nigga, little piece of research. Firing off. <laughs> <laughs> He's telling you he has his clip. Oh, I, I mean, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm um, trying to get where the clip is at. Go ahead. Well, no, I mean, I think that <laughs> I thought we was gonna watch some shit. Go ahead. Oh no, 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 no. Um, but no. So if we're just talking about music's impact. Mm-hmm. on violence and it being worse in general like if we take from 90s to now and this is just everything that we, we've grown up in mm-hmm. we have to step away from being sensationalized from the news in the general cycle and look at what statistics say crime in itself is way down it's it's not even close to it like it's almost like a peak fall to where where to where it used to be at from the nineties uh, no, from the nineties. But I, I don't specifically, think that's music but, is less influential. No, but, I think there's other things our, in our community. So specifically to, from twenty ten to now, like I think in the past two or three years, and this is even if we go to the mo- the worst cities, we talk about Chicago and we talk about Atlanta. Crimes way down from back then. It doesn't literally match up. Like so, what we're looking at is the idea of. Like how right now, us as parents, us as um, so, human beings. Let me finish the point. Go ahead. Um, we we tend to be like, ah, oh, right. I I I hate to have my kid go out and not see anything. Not not see anything. Like outside of my um, my viewpoint, and them go play outside like I used to because the world's so crazy. Mm-hmm. I think that in general we just see more of the craziness of the world in comparison to the fact that right now the world's way more safer. I would say that that's. I would say that that's probably. No, I hold on. I ain't going with the world is way more safe. I ain't going that. Like far. you could just statistically look at. I don't think that, that, don't think that makes the music less but, influential. Exactly, that's what though. I want to say. That like on the thing is okay. So would you say that there are more more kids with guns now than there were when we were in let's say what in grade school? I have no. I don't know any kids with guns. Like, oh, like okay. Like, I don't like, know no, what. The, I don't know. No, no, uh, no. But no. No, I mean, this is okay. being fact. But but then. <laughs> Like well, all I, we can do is just go down what statistics say. Violent yeah, crimes yeah, in say, black community is, is down. way down. I get that. So I get like, that. like I don't know what you're basing this off of outside of maybe like seeing a kid on Instagram. Oh no, I know. So, I literally so, know a dude hey, who but, has a like one of the homies has a high school nephew who got them went with somebody and they ended up like they was going to get some trees and buddy popped young boy. They all young boys, like fucking 14, 15 years old. This, like, and this is just close to me. Like, I know no, that this I, shit I, just I, recently happened. And this, there, there's no bait, no debating in that. Okay, that's not a thing that is a product of today. But, but Quint, here's that's my the, thing. That, like you can you can go from the nineties up until today, yeah, in which no, that exact bro, it's still different. No, no, it's but like I said, like you would be denying literal statistics, and it's not like you can't go back and look at these things in which like. Like we, we we can go through high schools in the '90s in which metal detectors was a huge thing. Well, let me. I, I got come and, on, and come they was taking back. guns and razors hey, here, and like all these things happen. Cool, cool. Hey, okay, my, here, here's my hit back though, because I, I, you've heard me talk about causation versus correlation. I think just because there's a correlation in the drop of violent thing, I don't think that means the music is less influential. I think there's other influences in black community that have helped lower. That that crime rate. Now I think if you talk specifically the music, I think it has gotten more graphic, and it has been the people who are going to do the crime. I think the music is way more influential to the people that are doing the crime now versus in the '90s. A lot of people in the '90s were doing crime out of like survival, or or they saw they 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 weren't influenced by like N.W.A. It was a thing, but they weren't going like, oh, I got to be like the next rapper, or I'm trying to, I got to do crime to be a rapper, or let's ask somebody. Well, we could we have somebody in the room that has lived that as a as a grown person and can give us real insight i believe on what it looks like so uh brother brother cat you mind uh giving us some some game about you know the difference that you've seen from being an adult during the during the time period that he's speaking all the way up until now we appreciate you brother doing what up what up yeah 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 first off thank you for letting me come through and then you know and enjoy you know and indulge with you Oh, uh, and, we, and we appreciate you stopping by, sure. bro. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, influence and crime. Like, I mean, I think that 
in the nineties for me, that was especially like during my early teenage years. So music, man, definitely, definitely a full impact on how we moved out there. You know, from like you said, NWA, the Wu Tang Clan, Mob Deep, all those, you know, groups that was coming through, Onyx, like it did make us walk different. It did make us act different. You know, we were pumping it into our ears every day. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Can I, you know, go ahead. I, I, no, I, I, go I don't ahead. mean to cut off, but, 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 but how violent was that music? Like, were they were they talking about killing any people back then you, like that? Yeah. What, what, yeah. What, what, what's Friday like, you like, open it? Like, I, Johnny just did that. I didn't. Yeah, he I didn't just asked him a question. Oh, my bad. Uh, yeah, my I, bad. I, I, I just, I, yeah, I, 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 I was asking him a question. I was asking him a question. I was gonna say, but do you think the the music was more violent or less violent than in today's music versus the nineties? No, I actually I think it's the same. Okay, I, I mean, th- I, I really think it's the same. I don't think that part of it hasn't changed because the hood hasn't changed. Mm. It's still drugs. It's still death. It's still guns. It's still you know what I mean. Like that part of the hood has never changed, and that's where the music is coming from. You know what I mean? So. I just think now is the way that we're able to consume it is what has yes. made that change. You know, the fact of, like you said, the cell phone, you can just instantly, if I want to hear... Just keep eating it. Yeah, like the first time I heard NWA, I had no idea who they were. They had already been out for a period of time, and my brother comes home from a group home and is like, here, you got to listen to this. Okay. Up until, and that's like right at the end of the like late 80s, mid to late 80s, NWA was coming through. Mm-hmm. Up until then, the hardest thing I heard was LL Cool J. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Rock the Bells or something like that. Run DMC, you know, all, everything that was coming out of New York City. When I first heard NWA, like through a walk, man, like my eyes lit up. Like, number one, mm-hmm. y'all cursing on here. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yes. <laughs> that wasn't even a thing yet. You know, um, what's this? Like, you brought up about the sticker on the tape. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like, after a two live crew and when them boys came live. through and made them put that sticker on that parental advisory sticker on the tape, I had no idea what that meant. You know what I mean? I didn't know that that was even a thing. And that just meant because. You're talking about a certain, you know, the fact that you're cussing on there. You're talking about, you know, drugs, guns, the police. You know what I mean? Before that, it was more like everybody's just trying to dance. And, and I got you know a question I mean? for you real And quick. then there was a shift that happened, you know. And when the music shifted, we started looking in our hoods around us like, ain't nobody dancing no more. Mm. Now everybody's hard, mm. you know. Oh, and okay. That's when the drugs came. So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. Uh, was it was it something that like uh, back then you 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 ever, being able to get the the NWA project or whatever? Uh, would you say that like were your parents listening to it as well? Like were you able to be able to you know what I mean? Was it something that was easily consumable? No, 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 no. <laughs> your parents so would you say, would you say that that's a bit of a difference now today? Well, but I, I think that it's more tough- mainstream. Well, yeah, you know but, I mean? but I think like, that's... like mo- a lot of kids listen to a lot of the killing and all that shit with their parents. The shit be on so, like, l- l- like the who we smoke was like a big hit and stuff, yeah, like, right? But but I, I think that that's a tough comparison point only because the the generation. Be- correct me if I'm wrong. The generation before him, his parents didn't grow up on hip hop, and they like it had been like soul and blues and like music mm, from the that's 70s a good, that's a good so so too. then it, it like it, and it's our just parents a tough... really either but i'm at least our, our parents didn't necessarily grow up on hip-hop well like, like so i i said like i my father all, all the music that i listened to came from my father but mm-hmm. he was he listened to hip-hop and that was like a main thing so from the outcast to like only person he, he didn't fuck with jay-z because he felt like jay-z was a biter but who outside of jay-z biter? yeah 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 like who from, was he who, biting the from? rap or uh, Big Daddy Kane. It, it was something in which you'll hear, like my, my, my pops from up north. Oh, gee. Jersey. In which there's a certain generation that doesn't fuck with uh, Jay-Z. Where it's like this little, little, in which I think maybe it's like the Rock him. It, it's a couple things about his flow. And they feel mm-hmm. like they like he kind of like Bit raps that off and shit. shit. Oh, okay. And, huh? Yeah, it's speed rap, Jay-Z. Yeah, yeah. And, but none of that. None, I mean, all, saying all that to say that 
all of the music that I listened to, I was exposed from my pops. Mm -hmm. But then as well, like me doing my anthology of hip hop came from my dad because he was CD man, the cassette man. Yeah, like I'm like literally up inside his his uh in the closet. It was like the entire closet is filled with cassette tapes mm -hmm. from the 80s all the way up until like when they stopped making cassette tapes that's it, that's um it so like we like yeah, no, I, I, I lived into it. all the all the newest shit from <laughs> like he had books and books of them damn uh cd you know the cd cases yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Hey, so like like for me I, I was shit. actually put on to music and all that and yeah. i think like the biggest thing is that the music gonna be the music it's the parent portion where like you have to make sure you allow your I mean like you speak to your kid and make sure they understand that this is no different than that Terminator movie, that whatever. Mm, Where like fake. these aren't factual things in which you should be looking to emulate. And to mm. me, that that's where I look at it at. No, I mean that's a good point. I will mm -hmm. say, uh, uh, before we you know wrap it up. Okay. I'm gonna leave. I, I want to leave it here. As far as you know, hey, he tried, pretty much trying to tell us you can't say shit as this. I'm finna get this off. <laughs> 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 That's a crazy setup that he just said. <laughs> and he said, Well, are we gonna leave it here until I say what the fuck I'm about to say? <laughs> <laughs> How about, I, think, I think this would be a fair way to do it. Get your clip off uh, and then no. let's throw it to uh, <laughs> Back to, to board, yeah, 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 so he can close the segment. Up. Okay, yeah. We, we, uh, oh, damn, man, fuck me up, bro. <laughs> fuck me up. Hey, hey, hey. Well, man, man, man. Exclamation point and a period. <laughs> right. I'm about to get me off my train of thought. But, but, but what I was going to say, it, it's. Cause I, I think the music. Like I said, I can't speak for the music in the 90s and stuff. I was a little kid. I wasn't really on music like that. So, I mean, that, that was a great, you know, it was a fair perspective on stuff that I wasn't able to live through. So, I, I respect that. I will say, I think what happened now is very intentional. I think they're, they've built on what happened in the 90s. And then you got to go, you know, to what Kanye said. You got to look at, like, some of the ownership structures of the labels and who's actually benefiting or, or profiting off of the black death and black genocide. And I think that will speak, you know, to a bigger, we can get to the root of it. Hey, Johnny we, P, just root. I, we, I'm going to make it quick. But then if you believe in that same thing, do you not then go to that same quote unquote conspiracy that says, oh, there was this big meeting in which we changed the direction of hip hop to be influential in these ways in these communities. Um, and so we're going to make sure we start pushing gangster rap. And that was supposed to be early 90s still, right? Mm -hmm. So then you... Like it, it's still the same same thing. We're just talking about from which starting point. So it was in if you go down the way that you're thinking, you still have to give credence to the fact that, okay, so these people were intentionally doing these things, but that didn't just start now. I can I, I can it, agree it, like, with that. It, it goes all the way through that whole I can thing. Agree you believe that, that I, mean, thought. I can I can definitely agree with that. I'm I wasn't even speaking to the starting point. I don't think it's just started with. No, you said right now it's it's intentional. Well, and I'm, I'm saying, just making I, well, the point well, that well, not it's right always now, been intentional. It's always been intentional. But, but when I I meant more so, it's it's worse. You know, I think it's worse nowadays. I think well, I think the the impact is more detrimental. You know, nowadays when when, when we're moving to a place, okay. when we're moving to a place where we're trying to progress and we're almost mm -hmm. there, having this kind of music, I think if we shed that, that'd be like mm -hmm. the last thing that we would we, we uh -huh. need to do in order to get to where we want to go. And that's why I think it's more detrimental. Yeah, and then and then we also didn't well we're gonna pass it to Kat real quick, but we also didn't talk about uh the the uh popularity of the the female scope of, of hip hop now. Oh, well. that, we gonna we gotta save that for him. Yeah. That might, yeah, that, that's talk a, about that's that the full other unpacking. But yeah. I do wanna concede a point. I do concede that I think that right now is the A is the most dangerous time to be a rapper. For sure. Um and it's primarily because of the rappers are actually living out their lyrics. A lot of the guys that you're talking about, and this is why, like, it's it's a crazy time because I don't I don't necessarily think that music as as crazily in, influential on the kids as it is the fact that they're literally documenting murder and death. And I think that the bigger thing is that it really just comes down to. Back in the day, to be a rapper, the barrier of entry was way high. Mm -hmm. But now, all you need pretty much is just a MacBook yeah. and a USB mic, and some and you can be a rapper. And don't fuck so now the actual body. killers and drug dealers can make music. <laughs> don't fuck around and catch a body, you done went. You right, blown. right. But my point is that the, the real killers and drug dealers and those guys are actually 
rapping now where those used to just be the people that was funding. Putting foot in the rear, yeah, 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 facts. And I can see the point that like rappers are like it's it's just crazy. Like you look at Take A and different shit like that. The shit that actually go viral be like people that really kill people. But, but wouldn't that make it more influential if back then people were just rapping about shit they saw versus people rapping what they well, live? Are, are, we, are we saying the lyrics are influential to the actual rapper? Or I'm just like, talking about the, the rapper as a whole. It's not a bunch of it's not a bunch of take K's running out here outside of take K. Do you understand what I'm saying? I mean, uh, it's some it's some not, like they actually living here. this shit. So but, there's a lot of rappers that actually go out here and and, and they'll they, they'll take L's trying to live up to that, and that's why I think that's I, even no, more influential. So I, I agree. Like other rappers weren't doing that. So maybe you misunderstood. That's then the also, part. I, I agree with that part. And then also the, the, the these rappers that the are kids doing this, don't they get, actually have more of of a platform to they actually speak more. You see what I'm saying? Like before, you ain't get to hear. Well, they can reach nigga. the kids more with the internet. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They yeah. actually have like real reach. Before it was just like they first they wasn't doing the shit, and it was just purely entertainment. You know what I mean? But now, and they didn't do interviews and shit like that. You know what I mean? You ain't really get the you ain't know these motherfuckers now. You like the real nigga shit is like really serious. It's like you know what I mean? even even when it came it came before, a little bit before. Like if you remember, they started talking about how certain rap. Well, he ain't a real nigga though. Like with the Rick Ross, oh, he was a probation officer. Right. And and, da, 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 da. But, but that's what I'm saying. Like, I think the, the rapper that. is way more dangerous now. Mm. And that, that, that's that's the part that I'm They're just saying that, okay, I, that gotcha. I'm, I'm. I think specifically the rapper. Okay. Like like because you have to live your lyrics now, and that's the danger. That's why so many rappers are dying. Mm. They're trying to be drug addicts and killers. Yep. That's just seems like a recipe of disaster. Fact. Like it's it's not like. Truthfully, there's there's not a. Uh, overdose epidemic in the black community at all. It, that's white kids. Mm-hmm. The and, and, but but if you go by what y'all are saying, oh no no no, I can't I can't. I, if I if you go by what y'all are saying, you would you that would imagine happens. that that's what would have to be. It. That shit happened all the time in the hood. Over and, there like, where like, I live at, and, and the overdose overdose epidemic. motherfuckers overdose over I'm, I'm, there I'm have, all I'm have the to, fucking it, time. I'm, at, I'm, I'm gonna have to look it up I here. I swear, here nigga, just, nigga just died over there. Uh, died off Sugar Creek. That shit happens all the time. Nigga just died off Sugar Creek. Matter of fact, it was a lady that threatened me to. Su- she was threatening me to give me some head. She told me if I came back to the store, she was gonna give me some head. She uh, died right, over right, there so, at the Sugar Creek well, uh, that, Rec Center. Oh, oh, D. And it, then, it, it, man, it, like I said, that, just about that's that's right, so, different. I, th- I think that that's I'm just di- so. What I'm talking about hey, is kids. Hey, Sorry, oh, you talking about kids? Okay, no, that, I'm talking that, about grown. No, I, I think that if we talking about crackheads, crackheads and like prostitutes and fiends mm. will exist, especially inside low income areas mm. in places in which like there, there's a. a Lack yeah, of opportunity. Me, bro. I swear to God. But I'm specifically talking about to uh, j- just kids. <laughs> but we're going to throw to the homie and we'll wrap it up. On this point. Yeah. Like overdosing? Oh, shit, nah. <laughs> that nah, we, we just, we, we, we just, <laughs> nah, we went, we, oh, my bad. We, we threw together crazy stuff. <laughs> <time. laughs> <Yeah, laughs> I was with him for a minute and then we went, all right. Yeah, uh, now we just giving you the last influence, word on the segment. I appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, influence hip hop. The violence, I don't think, as long as we keep indulging in it, we're just going to keep perpetuating it. We got to be the ones to make that stop. Yes. Perfect. It has to come from us. Mm-hmm. You know, to hear rappers coming through in the 80s and the 90s, I don't think there was any one of us that actually really believed that these guys was doing what they was glorifying. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They was glorifying stories that they would see somebody else doing on that block. Mm -hmm. But we know coming up, if you're spending time at the studio over here, over there, you're not living like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then this shift came of everybody wanted authenticity behind it. Mm -hmm. We romanticized it. When did Phil 50 Cent did it? It was around that time. Yeah, that's great. That it was, was around that time. He had he, he definitely played a role in that. Yeah, I don't know if he was like the one, but he yeah, had, early two thousands. Can you know? I'll let, I'll let you finish. I had a question, well, but I lost I, my friend. Yeah. Brought up a good point about fifty. Like yeah, yeah definitely no fifty. Um, DMX. When we started seeing mm. these rappers, that was really living wild like that. Mm. Like he's really doing what he's talking about doing, and he ain't making no qualms about it. You yeah. know. Mm-hmm. As that started to play out and play through, and then like you had brought up, you know, it started more and more drugs. The pills came, and the you know, mm-hmm. the weed changed. 
Mm. You know, it wasn't just reefer. <laughs> you know right. what I'm saying? The weed got stronger. Now the weed's like crack. Mm. And when you go on IG and you see your your rappers and stuff like you would hear about it, but we didn't we didn't really see it. You know what I mean? Nowadays, you guys you see it like this, like oh. that. You, I don't mean to bring up certain names, but like if if Kodak go on there, he got an L in his hand. If whoever you want to name, is like you crack. know, that's a fucking bar. That's I, how. That's, that's but I mean, that's how strong it is now. Jeez. You know, and I grew up smoking a lot back then. The trees they got now, I can't hang with that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? But not. I, I don't even want to. Can't do it. do it. I just didn't. You I know? just want to say this one little word mm-hmm. or where. Tell somebody that smokes habitually that they're addicted and watch what happens. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, That's it's a, a different kind of crazy hey, denial. But it's just a fucking, bro, it's a fact, like, nigga. Like, yeah. you, your that, whole I, 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 I don't want to yeah, go. Yeah, okay, you, let's go. Let's go. go. My bad. That. That's a no, fact. We, got, we got some smokers here that probably feel some kind of way. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Niggas react. <laughs> All right, but it's uh it's, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, we're offended. <laughs> ain't nothing listen i ain't nothing wrong with it of course you know what i mean it's a we call we now we call it medicine it's your medicine mm-hmm. medicinal medicinal <laughs> there you go um but he, like like you were saying man even when when you look at it like i was talking to you know my pops the other day and he was sitting there and he's looking at all the generation that's going through like he came from the older music love making music yeah. and all that mm-hmm. He saw the shift, you know, and he was just sitting there like upset. He said, man, like when you go and you look at somebody like a 50 or something like that, like, or a LL, like them brother, they was working out. They would, you know what I mean? They may drink and smoke a little something, something, but they giving you a full package, a full show when they get on stage, you know, now all you see is a bunch of addicts rapping. Bar. Okay. that's really what they are they look like a bunch of addicts you know and it's it's at a point now where like you used to kind of like idolize certain things and now it's like man you idolizing that mm. the fact that this dude don't care about his life he don't care about his health he don't care about what the the next man next to him mm-hmm. and his kids yeah hey i i remember what my question was when, when you said it's not gonna stop until we stop it or mm-hmm. are, are are you talking about us as consumers, or are you talking about the people that's actually doing the rapping? Like, where you think, what, what do you think is most important? You think if we quit listening to it, that would make an effect, or do you think it actually has to be yeah, the people? Yeah, the consumer that are... part is big. Okay, because like with anything with capitalism, you got to hit them in the pocket. When you have radio, not not exactly radio, but when you have, there was a point you had said, do you think that there's like this conspiracy that they're like, oh, we're going to do this and put people in this position? Once we show that we'll consume that, that they can make money off it, where a record company is now taking out insurance policies on artists. Mm-hmm. Mm. Before you said, when you sign your first deal, your insurance policy is in there. You pass right by it when you put your name on it. You know what I mean? And when they took out an insurance policy, they knew that they, in their mind, already had a set. We're going to make this certain number off of you. We're going to feed you everything you need and your consumers want to see from you. Mm-hmm. And when you die off, we're going to collect off you. And own all your shit. No, nah, that's that's uh, a <laughs> crazy game. Yeah, that's that's deep. That's deep. I think I think Dave got something to say. What's up? Hey, st- st- step to the mic. Step to the mic. Yeah. Just a quick point just to add to everything. We also got to realize like, yeah, consumers need to take responsibility on what we're taking in, but we only get a small portion of all the music that's really out there so like mm-hmm. i feel like we need to really like if we go on soundcloud and find somebody ain't got number four thousand followers but you really like their mm-hmm. music those need to be the people mm-hmm. going to radio stations like that's man fair. play this too you know what i mean like so we can yeah, get right a now better... there's also a, the biggest diversity of music that's true that's that i'll say that I, I do have one pushback to the consumer thing is i think when it comes to rap music especially like rap death and gangster music i don't think black people are the biggest consumers of it though so I mean, even it's if like no, no, that's a fact, fact. but that, that, is, that I thought, was the point I, thought, I was making with the opiate shit and yeah. who's the overdosing, right? Right, but, but that's what I'm saying. And I, I influence, but but that, that's why. But, but that's what. But I go back to that. So far, I think it goes to the rappers though, as far as not making it, because even if black people stop, if all black people stop listening to gangster rap, it's still gonna be a whole bunch of white kids in suburbia that right. listen See, to all it. black people and, not gonna stop listening. Well, you, people who never, love the stuff they love, the, the people who love the stuff <laughs> they love, they're gonna keep listening to it. But yeah. what I'm saying is, there's more out there. Like there's people like us that may 
cut on the Jid album, you know what I'm saying? Oh, but yeah. it took this long for Jid just to be recognized as oh, yeah. the talent that he has, you know what I mean? We got to, like, push more on what we no, really that's, feel that's like. So I'm, I'm also not going to make this a PSA for, like, Christian music and no shit like that, where we just don't talk about anything. I think that um, there... I care about genuineness. Shout out um, Lecrae. Right, right, right. <laughs> I, I care about genuineness in, in, in music. Yeah, um, but I'm not going I'm not gonna pretend like I don't listen to ignorant shit too and enjoy it. Um in which I watch ignorant movies and I watch ignorant uh and, and, and ignorant comedies and different shit like that as well. Um but I know how to differentiate. In which as the consumer, we also have to be very, very smart consumers and when we do that as well. But I'm not I I I I know I don't want to be inside a completely controlled PC music realm and silo to that either. I just want to throw that out there. No, that's I get, and, and that's a good point. That's a good point and I think we should leave it there. Mm-hmm. Uh we fit, we fit a few different topics. Yeah. Uh so I get, it'd be a good time to throw into the who asked you anyway. What y'all think? Sound good, sound good. Yeah, it's a good time. All right. <laughs> <laughs> it's Todd, how you feeling? I'm good. I'm kind of tired, but I'm good. Um, right. So, think about your mother, right? Okay. And all the things that she is. Would you want a woman like your mother? Would you date a woman like your mother? Mm. Mm. <laughs> uh, want a woman like my mother? I say, yeah. Date a woman like my mother? Go ahead. Yeah, nah. I mean, uh, mom was a good black woman. You know, so I mean. Peace, queen. What's a good black woman to you? Or what? What does she do that exemplifies a good black woman to you? Yeah, great question. I mean, from my perspective, it's just love. You know, she's just she mm. she 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 gives out. You know, she's very generous with the, not just me, but my friends, the people that I've brought to the house. Uh, you know that. I mean, also she. You know, there's loyalty. She's been with my dad thirty years now. You know, mm. twenty nine years. I mean, they've been they've been together for a long time. Uh, That's dope. She like even for me, I consider her a strong black woman because I mean she's there's a lot of strength and resilience that she's even instilled in me. So I mean there's a lot of you know I'd want that in a partner too. So I mean, yeah, I don't see no reason why I wouldn't date somebody that reminded me of my mom. Is there mm-hmm. specific like traits that your mother exhibited that you look for in a woman? Sense of humor. Mm-hmm. That's one. That's a good one. That's 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 definitely one. My mom's a pretty funny. Pretty funny lady, so uh, we always have our go. Like you know, we always go back and forth. So that's something you know I'd want to, you know, find in a partner that ability to. So if you you took a step back, would you say that women that you have dated remind you of your mom, or have similarities to your mom? In certain aspects, yeah. I mean, mm. typically. I mean, maybe not one hundred percent. They might be like one little thing. Okay. Oh, that you know, but. No, I mean, for a little bit. Not not nobody like completely embodied like what my mother was, but mm-hmm. certain things I find that oh, it might be you know, okay, it might be something there. But yeah. do you feel like? And I'm gonna let everyone else answer the original question. But do you feel like that there is a woman that could live up to the expectations? Um, not expectations, but do you feel like there's a woman that could live up to the things that you saw your mother do? Does that make sense? Uh, I mean, yeah. I mean, I don't think. Well, I don't think. I mean, my dad was there too, so I don't think it was. It was a mm, collaborative yep, effort. Yeah, so, a piece of that to uh, answer, yeah. so I mean, for for that, yes. I mean, I could be with a woman and she could play that part the way my mom did. So, yeah, I don't see why not. Okay. Just, just me personally, though. Um, yeah. We got, no, we got, we got two a, other panel that's members. A good answer. So. <laughs> <laughs> Who you throwing it to? Uh, let's go to Q. All right. Um, re-ask the question. Thinking about everything that your mother is, would okay. you date a woman like your mother? I think that it's, it's such a nuanced question. Um, would I date a woman exactly like my mother? No, it was coming. Um, may, maybe not specifically like my mother, right? But I could say that there is multiple things that I look for and don't look for in a woman in which would come specifically from my mother. Um, in which, like, I think... You know what I mean? Like, your mother is the first woman that you look to and you critique and you have love for and, like, you value. In which, so from that, like, there's going to be different little spaces that 
Mm-hmm. You're going to be like, all right, these are different little things that I want from a woman. And I mean, a lot of it ends up being unconscious as well because of like, it's a lot of things that your mother might do that you're going to look for a woman to do in which you, it's unconscious. You're not really thinking through that. Give and I, I've noticed What's that. What's a good example of something? Um, all right. So I, I think that in general, my mother was fairly traditional in the fact like she was at home. She had a daycare at a point in time. So mm-hmm. like, like, but that was still an at home daycare. And what the role that I seen her play, like she did cook. So like right now, cooking is not my strong point, And I look for a woman that can cook. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, like I said, um, like, like, like a lot of like the maternal things that we naturally ascribe in a gender role scheme is things that my mother did and I look for in a woman. Of course, I update my model to modern day mm-hmm. in which I know that I have to do way more than my father was doing. Cause like he was inside like the traditional structure of it. And he did like, like my mother did very much like a lot of traditional roles. He did a lot of traditional roles. And I know that that's not really where my relationship is, but do I want it to skew more towards like she does some of these more traditional roles and I do more of these traditional roles? Am I going to provide more than my woman? Yes. Is she probably going to cook and clean a little bit more than me? Possibly. Right. And us finding that median is a space. So a piece of that comes from what I see my mother come, me do. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's not necessarily always like an intentional thing but it has been like a subconscious thing that i can reflect on and be like okay i can see where this came from per se i want to just build on what you said about like your mom's usually the first woman you love Mm -hmm. also the first woman you probably have some kind of type of animosity hate right too not and that's why i said it's, it's, it's a lot of things that i can look at for my mother that i would then be like I don't want these things. But then it's yeah. all, it's also a part where, for real, for real, we go through a space of different toxic traits that we attracted to that we don't know where we, why we like this thing. But yeah. you can probably trace it back, back to an yeah. origin no. point. And that's what I was going to say, because like, mm-hmm. you were talking about, but I was just thinking that there may be a, one or two red flags that, you know, yes. come up <laughs> too. That <Facts>. come up. <laughs> red <laughs> flags. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Red <laughs> flags. Come yeah, up, yeah. They come up too. So, like, yeah, there's some red flags that I look out to, probably thanks to Mom Dukes too. So Big yeah. fact. Uh, and I, I guess my, my answer is it's actually just a bit of both of y'all answer. You know what I mean? Uh, I would say that, like, my mom, she literally, she took care of, she took care of a single single parent, you know what I mean, independent woman mm-hmm. thing, This that idea. Um, are there things that, but I, so, so can you give me the question one more time, exactly? Um, thinking about everything that your mother is, mm-hmm. would you date a woman like your mother? Would I date a woman like my mom? I love my mom to death, too, but. Like you say, it's it's certain pieces. You know what I mean it's certain pieces. It's certain pieces. Like like do I, I I don't want the that that whole strong black woman trope woman. I don't want that. You know what I mean? I don't I don't want that for sure. Um I know that like again with, with like quit like my mom is different. Like my, my pops wasn't in the house with us, so she it was no traditional role, period. There was no sense of traditional traditionalism in my house. And I lean more to a traditional fashion uh, to raise my family in which I want my, my kids, I want my kids to be the priority, my house to be a priority. Like, I want that to be my wife's priority. Mm-hmm. Um, and the house is important to me, but I also, I know that my my priority is sustaining the the uh, the structure, the, 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 the foundation. Um, so I, I, I'm not really big on like that whole, uh, like that independent thing, like, uh. Uh, I like to, like, to me, the, the independent thing is like, it's almost like a, I don't need you. And it's like, you know, I actually like to be needed. You know what I mean? I like to be wanted. Um, and so, like, that portion of it, I won't, I, I, I definitely won't. But, like, my mom, she, like you said, the love. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? That, that level of love that she gave each and every one of us, that's something that, yeah, like, may not necessarily because of that independent, John, you, you really may not have been able to prioritize it like you wanted to. You know what I mean? So oh, sure. that may be kind of where I'm like, that's probably what where it really comes from. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. My mom didn't have the ability to really prioritize us in the fashion that I would like for my 
oh, my old lady to prioritize the house. And um, so that would be it. And like you said, there are certain things Mom Dukes pop off, goddamn. I ain't with nah, all that popping off shit. Like, think Mom Duke, hey, she get to looking for some shit to throw at you. I, I, I had to think back, but there's yeah. a couple red flags that popped up too, though. <laughs> think Mom Duke say, God, goddamn, get you right together. Oh, yeah, yeah tighten you up. Get you right together. All screws and bolts, goddamn. So, speaking of independent, right? Um, in your past, obviously, you've been married for a while. In your past, did you find yourself dating independent women? Was that something that. Because like he was saying, like Q was saying, you know, you go through the things that you kind of don't like about your parent mm-hmm. when you're dating. So did you find yourself in that? That's a good question. Because aside from my wife, every woman that I was even like ever like attracted to, it was like the level of attracting was about what they were going to be able to do in workforce and all of that type of shit. I was always attracted to the idea of a woman that was able to, you know what I mean, make things happen and like so your first natural- things. Your first yeah, natural attraction first was natural, that. Exactly. My first mm-hmm. natural Which attraction was. was that. And then, and honestly, I, I literally, like, upon being in the position to take care of my, you know what I mean, being a traditional role, I didn't want that shit before. But upon being able to do it, then I, I, I gained the respect for it. And I kind of seen, now I see, like, the, the you know what I mean, the benefits of yeah. having said role. So, no, nah, that's absolutely true. I didn't even think about it that way. But, yet my initial attraction was to something similar to my mom. Gotcha. Um, Basically saying you learned, like, asparagus. Fuck out of here. Shit. Fucking asparagus. Now, we, we, honestly, I'm going to be honest. We were definitely about to cancel Johnny P. from yeah. the podcast. He said that asparagus is better than broccoli. Um, but talking, so I, Then he talk, he was talking about, bro, was talking about them niggas that smoking nowadays. They, they all mo They addicts. Uh-oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Y'all don't want to do that shit. What they got to do? What they got to do? Yeah, man, do you want that shit? <laughs> but nigga, you smoke too. Right? No, Uh-oh. you Uh-oh. smoke too. How you telling my personal <laughs> nigga? You, you actually co- you co-signed the fact that you was a smoker. Now you talking about my personal uh, life. <laughs> God damn. All right, so if I was to bring it back to that. <laughs> no. Johnny, do you find yourself dating and liking to date independent women? No addiction or addiction aside. <laughs> oh, or addiction aside. Man, how, how I get it's supposed to be a joke about you. How, how I get... okay, but we gotta answer that. I, I, I think that is. It's... Oh, I mean, I have, but uh, uh, like, like Rail said, I think that 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 wanting to be needed aspect of it. It's something to be said for that, though. You know, like having a purpose. You know, like I got to do this because it's it's needed of me. It's required, and if I don't, it ain't gonna get done. <clears throat> and I feel like that aspect. That's something that you know. That's that. That's that's what I want now. I, I haven't always dated. I've all dated independent women for the most part, or women that can, you know, yeah. get it done without me per se. You know, that I ain't mm-hmm. necessarily. And I don't, I don't want a woman that you know necessarily needs me to, 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 to get Whatever it done but that, that that a little bit of a necessity to what you're doing you know it, it just gives you that extra bit of motivation and purpose to why you're doing what you're doing so. agreed yeah agreed what about you um do i find myself wanting to date independent women um i would say that i, I like dating women that have something going for them, but i also like dating women that enjoy being a woman and I think that those, like those, those are those are kind of the two things. So like, I do. I also have like we. I've talked about my basement when it comes down to like what a woman does and what what like like she brings to the X Y Z. And at the same time, whether whatever she brings or doesn't bring, there is a space in which I do believe that the woman that I'm talking to needs to allow me to operate as a man. Mm-hmm. And I think that that is important. So, um, if that isn't defined in that independent woman's role, then nah. And when you say, and you, and just to be sure, you, you're you're speaking of damn, and you just said it. You said that uh, to act in, in in your position, right? So when you say in your position, you speak, you're talking about like leading the family. Oh, uh, so I said a woman acting as a uh, as well, well acting as a woman, or well, allowing um, you to act as a man. Yes. Um. So. I'm I'm also not like strict in the fact of like everything I say has to go, mm-hmm. 
Um, but I'm speaking more so. I'm, I guess I haven't really unpacked the way to completely define it. Um, but I do think that there are spaces in which, like, as a woman, being nurturing and like exhibiting feminine cast characteristics within your relationship is important for the guy that you're with, and that can come like it, it can come down to a lot of big things or things as small as like rubbing your man's chest and, and back when y'all laying down all the way up to like your ability to be submissive inside specific spaces when a decision has to be made that's important for the family. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, it, it's, it's a big array. Um, but it's also not like a, a black and white thing. So like there, there, there's the gray area in it, but in general, allowing a guy within a reasonable sense to operate as a man to me, that that's a, a space that is of an importance. If that's not within a, Independent woman trope, then again, I'm not necessarily interested in that. Um, but at the same time, I'm not going to act like I just want a woman that is a dependent either, um, mm-hmm. in which she's just relying on me and doesn't have an opinion about anything, doesn't have a perspective, can't put me on to some shit, can't correct me. Mm-hmm. Um, like, I think for me, that is a very important thing. I think everybody has their own like diversity of things that you need from a woman. For me, I know. I be in my own world sometimes and I can be like, I'm also really strong minded. So I need somebody that can like, <coughs> Hey, dial it back a second real quick. Like you, you, you going into like complete leader mode of da 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 Like mm-hmm. chill for a second. Let's, you know what I mean? It, that can correct me when I'm like stepping out of, of, of like, it's not even stepping out of line, but it's overdoing. Over, ODing. Over, there we go. Yeah, right. Yeah, I, yeah. Think, I think that's a good space though. Uh, Cause I've thought about this earlier when you brought it up originally. I don't think, a submissive woman and independent woman. I don't think they're mutually, mutually exclusive. Yeah, I think you could be an independent woman and be a submissive woman at the same time. I don't think you have to be one or the other. I think you can be independent. Yeah, I think there's and almost still like submit. The, and I ain't really we didn't try to go this way, but I yeah. mean the the idea of like independent women. I think it's used very loosely. Uh, mm-hmm. You know, I, mean? I think it's just used very loosely. You, it's almost like they're saying because I take care of my responsibilities, I get an extra tag. The yeah, independent woman. And it's so real. I, I say this. Dold, I think before we dive too deep into it, because mm-hmm. I think we can go into it. I would say, is that another one of our defined uh, segments that we're gonna get to later? Defining that, what that what that what that actually looks like. Define yeah, what independent. Then, independent. Woman versus... We should allow uh, when we do it. I know we ain't gonna do it today, but when we do it, I think that we should have Taj define. <laughs> This, Ta- Taj and Big L. I think it, it, Taj that's Big L. That, 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 my definition is just simple. Um, yeah, it's simple. You go, yeah, I need to say, problem. but <laughs> we, before before we like tap out, we do have two to three men inside the room, and which I think might be interesting just to get y'all perspective on the overarching question of like when dating has have you found yourself conscious or unconsciously looking to, you know have traits with might align with your mom like similar traits to your mom god damn big dave god damn well yeah um I little mean, dave on the mic <laughs> right right you gotta give him a little bit <laughs> little dave, little dave. You, you ain't shit yet so you little, yeah, dave. little dave hell right yeah now. that's and better you get big. but uh <laughs> Nah, um, <clears throat> me and me and uh, I've actually known you know like Quintel, who Jarrell, all these dudes for years, man. But yeah. like, um, <laughs> who? Like saying Q, real names, Q, real, my bad. <laughs> known y'all for a while, but like <clears throat> we've all known each other's moms and everything. Like you know, yeah. uh, back community band days, you know, uh, mm-hmm. Q's mom was the leader. That um, me and Jeremy have known each other close than uh, clo- close to. That's another- 20 years now so like as far as like hearing what y'all are saying and then thinking about my mother because uh me and real in the same thing you know it was five of us and my mom raised a single or whatever and um so you know we we didn't have that traditional structure it's like however mom felt when she came in that's the mood of the whole house (laughs) you know what i mean so if she don't want to be bothered and she's annoyed then she's gonna like give us all what we need to do and tell us to go on leave her alone you know what I mean? But she still had her ways of trying to fit each personality that she has as as her kids and try to, like, suffice with the same, you know, amount of love. So I feel like 
me personally, I would always look for somebody who can, you know, care about me as much as they would care about their own self. You know, that's the only thing I really can pick up from my mom. She really cares okay. about us as much as she would care about herself. Like she died for us just, just like she would try to protect herself if she was about to get killed. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? That's all I can really ask for. Like, I mean, if that's like saying they just like my mom, you know, there, there's also other traits. My mom suffers from, you know, certain anxieties and stuff. So I would, you know, I know how I would know how to deal with that. But to say, like, initially just going in, do I want a woman that suffers from Try anxiety? Maybe not, but mm -hmm. who knows? You don't know what's going to happen, really. Yeah. But oh, yeah. as far as, like, picking up the positives from your mother, I think really every man is probably going to have something that they see in a woman that's going to, like, it's it's not even about them being like your mom or favoring her physically or anything. It's just simply yeah. about what do you recognize? Like you said, sense of, uh, Newton said sense of humor. And I'm like, man, yeah, my mom has the quirkiest sense of humor. It's like, it's not the initial joke. It's everything around the joke. Mm -hmm. And we grew up like that. So like if I ever got in a relationship with a female or talked to her, and we can laugh at a good joke, but it's not because of what was said. The punchline, it was more like, mm -hmm. how's it going to the next joke? Like, mm -hmm. this is crazy. Did you see how he was standing when he did that? Or like, <laughs> it, it's like something that don't even have nothing to do with it. You know, you know what I mean? But you can, it just, it, you know, it's up in the air. Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think every guy probably has something there. Okay. Mm -hmm. yeah, that was dope. That was I, dope. I, I think one of the biggest things he said, and I think kind of what we've kind of mirrored too, is like, what the thing, one thing, everybody looks for is that unconditional love too yeah. mm -hmm. and that's hard to find but unconditional is i'll throw it back Brother to the Kit. mic yo yeah so well i've been as you know i've been married for a long time mm -hmm. so i can honestly say at this point unknowingly i did marry my mom <laughs> you know what I, mean? <laughs> I did not see it coming you yeah. know um at all you know and you brought up a good point earlier. A lot of that is just, it is subconscious. You're just drawn mm. to certain things. A lot of times when you're young, like you, you don't know what it is. You know, mm. even when you get older, sometimes you don't know what it is until you've been through a bunch of things. And all of a sudden you wake up one day and you're like, man, the same, some of the same things I couldn't stand at home, I can't stand with you. Mm. <laughs> you know? right, 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 right. But right. you mm. find a certain comfort in it yeah. because you grew up in it. You know what I mean? You know how That's to operate where, within that space. As, mm. as men, we got to be careful. Women, too. We got to be careful because we can fall victim to being addicted to pain, mm. you know, and we'll call that love and it ain't love. You know what I mean? Yeah, there you and go. That's, that's, a, that's, another, that's one of my favorite two words right there, trauma bonding. Mm -hmm. So you got That's a be... crazy favorite two words. No, that's what I was thinking too when he said it. Like, favorite... wow. But all right, bro. I'm just like, well, just, yeah, try. I mean, it happens Mine a lot. might be like love and happiness or something. <laughs> this nigga think, said, uh, what in yours is definitely nuance. Oh, no. Nah, <laughs> 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 My bad. I, I don't want to let you know. It's all good. It's all good. Yeah, you're right. I mean, we, that's, that's what we do, you yeah. know, and something when you guys were talking, I, I was sitting there and I, I was thinking, though, and I said, well, you know, because especially as being black men mm -hmm. and in the environment that we're in, in the culture that we're in now, those same traits that you idolize, you know, per se, what if they came from a different source, that they weren't coming from a black woman? Because those traits that I found, my mom was white. Mm. You know, my parents were married 52 years. Mm. You know what, what I'm black. saying? Now, my father dated black, Spanish. You know what I mean? I grew up dating Spanish, you know, black and white. You know what I mean? All, all the way around. I went with what I was most, most comfortable with. At the end of the day, my wife happens to be black and Colombian. She's mixed, mm. you know. But it was because of the certain traits. I didn't have to come through. I didn't, I got fortunate. I wasn't raised with what I call like a blinder. You know, like some of us will have certain blinders on these days because we're looking for a certain thing coming from a certain race. And it might be coming from something that was next to you the whole time. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's just... I, I would say, I think that we definitely have to have him back on the Oh, brother, can't, <laughs> I, I, I can, hey, I can already see like, like there's a lot of gems. Um, nigga, but what, I, I will you. also say before, before we finish it off with a positive takeaway, we can't let tone Mr. A dot, sir, a dot himself <laughs> over there. 
pushing buttons. Um, you got to answer this one. Robin, too, man. Robin sneaking under the radar. Yeah, it definitely has. Just swing it to him. Swing it. Nah. Um. I I I definitely say like I, I it's some like it's certain traits that I would like. You know, as far as my mom goes, like it's certain traits I liked about my mom. I grew up in an independent household. My mom raised three three children. Um, we didn't have a you know, it was different men around at different times, but to some degree, I would say no. The stuff that I would like is like my mom's real funny. Like my mama one is, is like my best friend, so I do yes. like that aspect of things. Like I like I would I wouldn't mind having a woman who I can laugh with. Like me and my mama mm-hmm. joke all day. Y'all know my mama. Mm-hmm. She gonna joke all day. Like mm-hmm. she joke all day. She's real smart about um. She's real smart about getting stuff done. She's real clever. I like those traits. Mm-hmm. Um. Other than that, I, I wouldn't want a woman like my mama. Okay. Wouldn't, like, just straight up. Yeah. So, so you try to avoid uh, some of those traits? I can't say I try to avoid those traits. It's Haven't just like... able to. I mean, are, 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 hold on. Are, are there certain traits that, like, you're trying to avoid? Um, I, I, I can't say there are certain traits I would okay. avoid. Like, my mama, um, my mama like collecting stuff. I don't, I don't. <laughs> hey, honestly, I, I, don't I think that's great because the, I'm like if if y'all walk like when you walk in and it's none of this shit here, I'm a minimalist. Mm-hmm. So like I, I I don't like any level of like order of, of stuff. anything. Um, <laughs> and that that comes from like the ex- exact opposite. Like I like my people's they'll keep shit mm-hmm. over years and years and years, and it, it just becomes and for me the, like the idea of being a minimalist has allowed so much mental space because of like I intentionally said I'm gonna do the opposite. Exactly. That's kinda that's kind of the route I went about things. Like yeah. I don't want a lot of different I don't want a lot of stuff. Um there's some other traits. I ain't gonna sit there and put my mom out. Oh there. no you ain't got to yeah, yeah, you know like yeah, it's some other traits. Yeah. 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 We love yeah. Mama Ross. We yeah. love you. Hey I hey hey shout out to all the black moms out there. Yeah, yeah I definitely yeah. love my mom. Sure. But I'm shoot it's some traits about me I'm sure she don't like too. So like yeah. she, well she make it known. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> like, <laughs> think mom do say go square yeah, She way. definitely she make it known. Know. She gonna but overall nah like just just certain traits like I do like you know you got the good things and you got your bad. I think that's about everybody. Um one of the things I will say my mom definitely raised us to be like to look at people for who they are mm. so it's just like you just look at people for who they are and accept it i'm not really like mm. the people in my life i just accept them for who they are like my my morals is what guides me for the most part and if those people don't abide by my morals mm-hmm. you ain't no, you ain't gonna be in my life just there you mm-hmm. go Period. i i, I can <laughs> I like see it. that too bro i actually you know i can see that in person you know in your personality and stuff but i think that's a good time to Unless anybody else got something, y'all, y'all, y'all good? Everybody good? I was going to chime in and just say something. No, so, <laughs> um, going back to something that uh, I don't know if it was you or um, Johnny P, but one of y'all said the the um, the need to be needed. Mm-hmm. Um, and I remember, like when I was in my younger twenties, I used to think, "Oh, you know, I don't need a man for anything. I want you, but I don't need you." Mm-hmm. But as I've gotten older, I'm like, "No, I actually need my partner to love me, to support me. I need you to be there." When I'm having a hard time, I need you to be reliable. Like I need you for a lot of things, um, and so that wasn't something that I just that wasn't something that I kind of discovered until like my later twenties, my earlier twenties. I was just like, I don't need him. I want him. Like mm-hmm. I don't need him for nothing. It's like no, that's a lie. Yeah. You do need him for a lot of things. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I greatly that appreciate was... that. I agree. Mm-hmm. I think that that was something that that a lot of that 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 was absolutely needed for where uh, the relationships. And where the you know what I mean the yeah. scope of our community are, are as a result to the, our interactions uh, uh, with each other in relationships and that whole need won't thing it, like yeah no at the end of the day like we need each other bro mm-hmm. there's mm-hmm. no way around it. we need each other bro like at the end of the day you can make as much money as you want to you still need somebody that's right there with you and you I guess somebody. and the thing is that in in conventional times right now it's not as much as we. Like literally need each other, but it's the want to need each other mm. per se. Where I think that the most healthiest versions of relationships between ourselves and within the black community community in general is you know what I mean there there's the dissection I mean the the intersection of sex which is male and female, um, and I, I just think that, that that's really important. Because it, there's, it's like yin and yang. It balances itself. Mm-hmm. Um, and where you get to a space when somebody needs, like, like somebody feels as though they don't need it, it imbalances the entire equation. Yeah. 
For sure. And right now we're we're at such a weird time because truthfully, most people have the ability to not need somebody. Mm-hmm. So now we actually have to want each other. Yeah. No, that's tough. We got to take this. That's tough. Yeah. So, that's Johnny. Like Jim, that's like some positive. No, that's, yeah. that's, that's There you that's go. I, say it again. That's a, man, fuck you, man. No, you just... you. <laughs> You see, I, I, I tried to let him segue to the positive takeaway. Yeah, bro, that was the L.E.U. Oh, I, and, and oh, I thought you was like, like fuck you. I thought you, I thought you was trying to cut you. That was the L.E.U. Hey, you can't you know, even get niggas L-E-U. real compliments. You give a nigga a compliment, he say fuck you. That's crazy. I'm over here trying to wait for the camera and stuff, and he don't even want to take a dunk. No, no. He say The camera was already. All right, y'all. That thing crazy, bro. But I had a fast break. Right. The nigga said, that sound like some positive. Bro, pull the book. The thing is, the thing is. Hey, I'm pulled a Ben Simmons. No, the thing right. is, <laughs> I can't shoot it. <laughs> bro, hey, the bro thing is, you gotta be weird in your cue, though. You gotta be weird because that nigga may be throwing a layup, but then maybe coming behind that bitch with a block. You can't got there. You know what I mean? You can't trust this. That boy, that that boy, that boy, bro. It's that, all love. This nigga throw just... the ball up and then be coming like this. Like, that boy, that, up, that, that boy yeah, pulled bro. a Ben Simmons. This man was like, nah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, nah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I think we should segue, go to a positive takeaway. All right. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I can start it. You want to um, start it? I can start it. Where'd yeah. You go? I'll start. I'll, I'll jump rope in. I'll, I'll be long with it, so I'm gonna try and be real short and get it out the way. Um, my positive, my positive takeaway for the week will be that I'm comfortable. I think that I today, me not today, but this weekend was able to allow me to see that I'm comfortable. I think. That when you go certain spaces, I went to homecoming, mm-hmm. and you see a lot of people that's trying to do like two things. They're trying to like relive glory years, and they're trying to be something that they weren't. Mm-hmm. You see those two things a lot. And for me, like I, I'm literally the same person here, at work, anywhere else. Like most people that know me, literally just say the exact same thing about me mm-hmm. because I'm just that person. And I'm comfortable with what I have done. I've lived a great, great life up until this point. Like, I, I feel like I've had, like, multiple lives in which I've did multiple things. And I've been happy with what I've done to where I don't go any place and have to overcompensate. And I'm really, really happy about that when I'm able to look at a lot of other people and scenarios in which, like, I can go back to homecoming and have no need of living any glory years, anything like that. Mm -hmm. And the things that I've done still stand the test of time. So whether it's like things that I did and I can go back and see it or, you know what I mean? Like, like the person in which I was is still the stand up person in which it is. Mm -hmm. And that was, that's my positive takeaway for the week. No, that's like that level of character has sustained itself. Yeah, I'm gonna say it, just... it, it speaks to integrity. Yeah, it, you yeah, know, yeah. it speaks to legacy. You know, yeah. you did, what, did what you didn't had to do. Mm-hmm. That's dope. So, oh, um, yeah. Uh, my my positive takeaway uh, for the week, I'm gonna say is uh, being open to allow people deserve people that deserve to be in your space. Being open to allowing them to be in your space. Mm. Um, I long time, long time. I like, you know what I mean. I know who the people that I rock with are, and they've been the same for so long. You know what I mean. My, I got all of the homies. I got seasoned. Like you know what I mean. Niggas got them got seasoned. Niggas like seasoned. That. Like you know what I mean. Like you say, I know your mama, I know your mama, I know your mama. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You, you know, can so. meet Miss Pat if you want to. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So like. I, I, I stay like, you know what I mean, close knit with, with the same people for quite some time and I and I neglect to let people in. Um but at the same time what I what I've recently seen is that like you be you, you need to let people in. All this, you know what I mean? Yeah. You need to let people in. Because mm-hmm, the thing mm-hmm, is, is that mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's a part of growth. Yep. You know what I mean? That's a part of growth. You have to let people in um so that you could actually see uh, 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 beyond your realm of thought, because you're gonna have the same uh, or, or similar training thoughts amongst your the same group. You know what I mean? But mm-hmm. allowing people in allows you to get a whole nother perspective yep, and a diversity and find opinion. another your know, brother or sister that that you you both can build each other and love each other. You know what I mean? So yeah. like that's that was, that's my positive takeaway. That's good. You, 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 people, like you know, that's relationships good. you might not even see coming for sure. Mm-hmm. But uh, should I just Johnny a new one? 
Yeah, and just, we like we brought him into the fold, and I fuck with Johnny a lot. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it, it was, it, yeah, no, yeah, yeah, like 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 in the that, sense of like, like shout out Suave, the, yeah, like like when we look at our our, our general collective mm-hmm. of people, Johnny through a friend of friends, and Johnny oh, no. the one here right now, like we fuck right. with Johnny, so yeah, big facts. Now that 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 that's big. Yeah, I, I I think about that a lot too, bro. Like I'd be like, man, if I ain't meet. You know, bro, I wouldn't have even yeah, yeah, met yeah. y'all. And it's just, mm-hmm. you know, just allowing, like like you say, allowing people to come into your space and being open. Mm-hmm. You don't know what kind of fruit, you know, that's going to bear exactly. on down the road. But I uh, I won't be too long-winded with mine. Mine it might not be as positive, but, 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 but I'm going to go back to something I said earlier, you know, like in Kanye said it too. Slavery Stand. is a choice. You ain't got to choose it. So Woo. you got uh, freedom is always a choice. You could always, you know, you, you ain't got to choose slavery. I've seen a lot of black people getting on TV this week and choosing slavery, but mm. you can get on TV and choose the opposite too. My and dog. so, and and, and that's Great. a positive. That's my positive takeaway. We ain't always got to choose slavery. We could choose freedom. And, and that's my thing: black freedom. Sheesh. That's what I'm gonna stand on. But I'm gonna say <laughs> we, we probably got to clip the last little second. That shit was a ball. Hey, that's some t-shirt. Shit. Yeah, God, Ali. That's, that's, that's all I got. But I'll say why like, you say that for the end. You should have let off the goddamn show with that. Hey, one. And so, no, that's that's my that's my Michael Jordan stretching at the end of the south. Uh, oh, in the space yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I got to finish it off strong. You tore ligaments for that one. I got you. I had bro. to man. It might get canceled for it, but who knows? Mm-hmm. But I'll say like, comment, my tone was subscribe. Trying to get my bad. Uh, follow the To Be Fair show on Facebook, yes, sir. Instagram, he gonna point at and me. YouTube. You <laughs> <laughs> like, he's the inside joke, but we love it. <laughs> if y'all have any comments, please put them down below. Uh, and I think that was a good show. I am your host, Johnny P. Oh, here, real. It's Q. And we, we out. out. Peace, fam.